it's homework time. Yes, guess what? Chicken butt. <laughs> All right, lesson six. Let's do it. Let's start off by jotting our name down at top paper. Don't want to forget that. Might as well do it now. That's why it's at the top of the paper, not the bottom. So we'll do it first. I can go ahead and write today's date, the actual date. I'm just going to write today, whatever. Our instructions are kind of long here. Shade the area models. Here they are. Beautiful. To represent the number. Here's the number, 2 and 35 hundredths for this one. And we'll draw horizontal lines to make hundredths as needed. Locate the corresponding point on the number line. Beautiful. Label with a point and record the mixed number, this mixed number, as a decimal. So it, lots to do here. All right. So let's start off by shading the area models. Now you're going to do a better job shading than I am going to um, because, you know, hey, that's the way it goes. All right, so there's one. We're looking at two and 35 hundredths. Okay, so two. Now I do the shading here a little bit different from uh, Eureka Land um, because I, I think my way's better. Huh. So um, when I look at 35 hundredths, I want to see that that's three tenths. They go ahead in their examples, and they draw the nine horizontal lines you'd need to turn these tenths into hundredths, I think that's kind of unnecessarily complicating things. But if your teacher wants you to do it that way, then go for it, home slice. All right, so look, one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so look, there's three tenths, and one, two, three, four, five hundredths, which makes 35 Hundreds. And I can see that fine without drawing those lines. All right. So 2 and 35 hundredths. Well, I have two holes, right? So write this as a decimal. And then 35 hundredths. There we go. So to locate this on the number line, well, look, I'll, I'll label more than I really need to here. Here's 2 and 1 tenth. 2 and, whoa, 2 tenths. 2 and 3 tenths two and four tenths. Okay, so two and thirty-five hundredths. Well, think of this, and I'm going to write this again here, the two and three tenths. I'm going to write as two and thirty hundredths. And the two and four tenths, I'm going to write as two and forty hundredths. So you can see how two and thirty-five hundredths comes between thirty and forty. Thirty-five is right between. So right between thirty and forty hundredths, that's where I'm going to locate 2 and 35 hundredths. Make sense? All right, don't worry, we got more to do. All right, let's go on. And here's another one in 1B, just like the last one. Again, you're going to do a better job than I'm going to do in shading in here because uh, I, you know, I'm just showing you how, how this homework works. So I'm looking at 3 and 17 hundredths. So there's my three holes, all right? There's three. That's the easy part, right? Those are completely shaded in in our minds. Now, 17 hundredths is, think of it as 17 cents. It's a dime. There's my dime, my tenth. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hundredths, seven pennies. So you see my $3.17. In fact, that's how I can write it out as a decimal is to think of this in terms of money. Three dollars seventeen hundredths, seventeen cents, three and seventeen hundredths. One, two, three holes, and there's my dime and seven pennies that make the seventeen cents, the seventeen hundredths. Okay, so now I'm going to do as I did on the last one and write these out in terms of hundredths. So I'm going from three to four on this number line, so this would be three, and I'm going to call it ten hundredths. Okay? See that? So $3.10. And what would come next? Well, another dime, right? $3.20. That's this mark here. So $3.17, 3 and 17 hundredths would come between these two and a little bit closer to the uh, $3.20, right? So 3 and 17 hundredths. I hope you find it helpful to think of it in terms of money. And again, with this, the Eureka Ways, they turn this entire thing into hundredths, which I think is actually not as useful as the way I do it. So, booyah. Let's go on to number two. And in number two, we're actually doing a little bit less than we were doing in number one. Well, hot dog and hallelujah. We're going to just estimate to locate the points on the number lines without the area models and such. So we have five and 90 
hundredths, okay? So as we go through this number line, let's think in terms of hundredths. Let's think in terms of $5.10 sort of thing. So let's, uh, even though it doesn't require us to do so, let's think of this in terms of a decimal number. Five and 90 hundredths, we simply write five and, there's our decimal point, 90 that ends in the hundredths place, five and 90 hundredths. Okay, so now look, we're not going to label every point here, but this would be $5.10, five and 10 hundredths, 20 hundredths, 30 hundredths, 40 hundredths. Let's label this midpoint here, five and 50 hundredths, 60 hundredths, 70 hundredths, 80 hundredths, 90 hundredths. So here it is 5 and 90 hundredths. And up on the top side, we'll label it in terms of the fraction 5 and 90 hundredths. Beautiful. Right there. There it is. And oh, let's put a little dot so we're sure that's where we're locating it. All right, now in this next one, 3 and 25 hundredths, when you think of this again in terms of money, to put it in terms of a decimal, 3 and is the decimal point, 25 that ends in the hundredths place. 3 and 25, where are we? Hundredths. So let's label this, thinking in terms of money and hundredths. This would be 3 and 10 hundredths. 3 and 20 hundredths. Oh, squeezing them in. 3 and 30 hundredths. Ah, so 25 cents would come between 20 and 30 cents here, yes? So it's back smack dab in the middle, right? And I'll draw a little arrow here, because I don't have room to write it there. So that's 3 and 25 hundredths, which I'll record top side as the fraction. 3 and 25 hundredths. Beautiful. Can you believe we're already halfway done with homework? Zoo, yeah. Let's go on. And in number three, we're just giving you, we're going to write equivalent fractions and decimals for each of the following numbers. We're giving them in unit form, right? So two ones, two hundredths. Well, let's do them first as fractions. Okay, so two ones is just two, and two hundredths. I mean, you're just writing exactly what it says there, right? Now, to put this into a decimal, think about it for a second. We have two what? Two hundredths hundredths. So we can handle two ones, right? Decimal point and what do we have in tenths? Oh, there are no tenths. So there are zero tenths. So that's why there's a zero in the tenths place. This is one where sometimes I'll see students make mistakes. They'll write 2.2 .2 here, but that's two and two tenths. You have a two in the tenths place. It's two and two hundredths. So that two belongs in the hundredths place. There are zero tenths. Let's go on. So here again, we have two ones. We're going to write it as a mixed number first. And 16 hundredths, which simply means 16 over 100. I can't make that any more complicated. It's that straightforward. Now to write that as a decimal number, we're going to write two. OK, there's our whole number two. And now we're going out to the hundredths. So I'm going to write 16 such that it lands, it ends in the hundredths place. Two and, read the number, 16. Where am I? Hundredths. All right, so now let's go ahead and do C the same way. Three ones, seven hundredths. Three as a mixed number, right? Three holes, and then seven, what? Seven hundredths. Now to write this as a decimal number. Three ones, okay, is three. And what do we have? Seven hundredths. Just like A up here, we have no tenths. So a, we have zero tenths. That's why a zero goes in the tenths place but we do have seven hundredths. Do we have seven in the hundredths place? Yes, Ch check. Well, let's look at the next one. One, one, 18 hundredths. So as a mixed number, one, then 18 hundredths. We just write 18 hundredths. Is that just like that? And so now as a decimal one, and I want to write 18 such that it ends in the hundredths place. 18, where am I? Hundredths, Ch check. Nine ones, 62 hundredths. None of these are any easier, more difficult than the others. They're all straightforward. So as a mixed number, we have nine ones, 62 hundredths. Just write that fraction just the way it's uh, laid out there. Now as a decimal number, we're going to say nine ones, okay, decimal point, 
we're going to write 62 such that it ends in the hundredth place. 62, where am I? Hundredth. Cha-ching. Six ones, 20 hundredths. Okay? Same thing here. We'll write as a mixed number. Six and 20 what? 20 hundredths. And once more, we're going to write six ones. Decimal point there, six and I'm going to write 20 such that it ends in the hundredths place. So there's 20. Am I in the hundredths place? Yes, six and 20 hundredths. Beautiful. We just have one more left to do, and it's matching. Yep. And uh, we do want to look at the instructions here, and though it's just matching it, we're going to draw lines from dot to dot. Yeah, to match the decimal form to the unit form and fraction form. Okay. Now, this is the part that you have to pay attention to, that all unit forms and fractions have at least one match, and some have more than one match. Hmm. Notice that it doesn't say that some of the decimal form, that all the decimal forms have at least one match, but they probably do. Let's check it out. So four ones, 18 hundredths. So four in the ones, and then 18 that goes out to the hundredths. Well, this is the only one that even has 18, right? And is it 18 hundredths, four ones and 18 hundredths? Show sure enough. Ring. And now how would we write that as a mixed number, as a fraction form? 4 and 18 hundredths? Uh, right there at the top, 4 and 18 hundredths. And I'm going to do this the way I think you'll be doing it. Okay, so we'll be going, kind of going back after we do all the easy matching to see what's left. All right, so 4 ones, 8 hundredths. So that means how many tenths do we have? Zero. So we should see 4 and 0 tenths, 8 hundredths. So 4 point, oh, there it is, 0, 8. You see how that is? We have an 8 in the hundredths place, but there are no tenths. So in fraction form, this would read just like the uniform, 4 and 8 over 100, 8 hundredths. Ah, there it is. It's like picture pages. 4 ones. 8 tenths. So now we have 4 in the ones place, decimal point, 8 in the tenths place. 4.8, 4 and 8, oh, there it is, 4 and 8 tenths. All right, now we look at 4 and 8 tenths. What would that look like as a fraction? 4 and then 8 over 10. <gasps> Do you see 4 with 8 over 10? I don't, but it says all the fractions have at least one match. Ah, we must be dealing with equivalencies here. So which one of these has an is an equivalent to 4 and 8 tenths? Well, I know that 8 dimes is 80 cents, which is 80 hundredths. So 8 tenths equals 80 hundredths. So let me just write this down so you see what I'm saying here. I'm saying that we're given 4 and 8 tenths, right? That's not here. But we do know from the work we've been doing that that is equal to, well, 8 dimes is 80 cents. 80 cents. Those are equi- Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so 4.8, 4 and 8 tenths is equal to 4 and 80 hundredths. All right, now we have 4 tens, 8 ones. But gosh, there, there's no decimal there. There's, there's no fractional part. It's just 4 in the tens place, that's 40. Eight ones is eight. 48, oh look, 48, there it is. 48. Now, that's how we'd write it in decimal form. How would we write it in fraction form? Yeah, hot dog is gonna look exactly the same. All right, now look, we're left with this 4.80, four and 80 hundredths. Ah, we are, yes, we figured out that that is equivalent. Yes, yes, yes to that four ones and eight tenths. And so this, of course, can go down there as well. Gets kind of messy. Good luck to your teacher reading that. But guess what? You've done it. That was a pretty straightforward one, huh? We completed another homework time. Congratulations. I will see you again next time. It is once again homework time.